The following is an exclusive presentation of Turner Sports. In 1998, cable television's exclusive host for the 18th Olympic Winter Games from Nagano, Japan, and the fourth Goodwill Games from New York. become a rarity in today's game, but a doubleheader is what we have in store for you today from Wrigley Field between the Atlanta Braves and the Chicago Cubs. Hi, everybody. Pete Van Wuren welcoming you to Wrigley Field, a game that was snowed out back in April. The reason for this doubleheader as the Braves and the Cubs kick off this road trip for Atlanta. First of all, one roster move for the Atlanta Braves. Javi Lopez back in action today. He's back on the active list. Will catch in game two. A uh, rather popular player had to uh, take a trip to Richmond, though, to make room for Javi. Mike Mordecai has been optioned back to Richmond to make room on the roster for Javi Lopez. Well, Don Sutton, Ernie Banks' favorite expression used to be, let's play two. He couldn't wait to get out to Wrigley Field and play a doubleheader, but I wonder if he would have said the same thing if he had looked at today's pitching matchups. He might not have. I know he liked playing baseball, and the Cubs could have used him earlier this year. They got off to an 0-14 start. They've won 41 and 43 since then, but look what they have to go against today. They've won 41 ball games. This duo has 26 wins, an earned run average near three combined. They have 15 road wins, and if the Cubs are looking for something else to worry about, Nagel and Maddox are a combined 11 and three against the Cubs. But before the Braves start putting both wins into their win column, they've got to get past a young man named Jeremy Gonzalez, who is a very talented young man, good hard fastball, good overhand curveball, a knuckle curve, and he is rapidly gaining a lot of people who, who think he can pitch in the big leagues and successfully. Long day, but it could be a fun day for us. Should be fun. Greg Maddox undefeated against Chicago in his career, and you know the kind of luck the Braves have had against pitchers they're facing for the first time, and they're facing a good one in game one. Back with the lineups and all the action from Wrigley right after this. Sandberg and Mark Grace complete the rest of the infield. Scott Service behind the plate. And a good-looking young right-hander on the mound. His name is Jeremy Gonzalez. He has been on a roll lately for the Cubs, 5-0, and oh, averaging at seven innings a, uh, a start. An earned run average that is good considering it's Wrigley Field. Book we get on him, Pete, is it? He'll come inside on anybody. He has four pitches, good ones that he will throw for strikes. But don't look for this 22-year-old to act like a 22-year-old on the mound. Yeah, the Cubs very, very much impressed with the work that they've gotten from this native of Venezuela so far in his brief Major League career, a 7-2 and two record after going 2-2 two and two at Iowa to start the year. And here is Jeff Blauser to lead off, hitting 341, 12 homers, and 47 RBIs at the game-winning hit yesterday against the Dodgers and takes strike one as we're underway on a cool gray day from Wrigley Field. Temperature about 70 degrees at game time. And the wind blowing in today, so it should be a good day for the pitchers. Count nothing in two. They've turned the lights on, in fact, here at Wrigley Field to start this doubleheader. Gonzalez will work from the first base side of the rubber. He'll tilt back. Everything that he throws will start downhill. Misses outside. A ball and two strikes. Fastball about 92 miles an hour. And more of a fly ball pitcher than a ground ball pitcher, we understand. Now he has a two-seamer, but he doesn't use it that much, usually down and away from lefties. Breaking ball misses. The count two and two on Blauser. 
Blazer, Tucker, and Chipper Jones do up here in the top half of the first inning. The only doubleheader on the schedule for the Atlanta Braves this year, and it was not a scheduled twin bill. We had a game snowed out earlier back in April. Here's the 2 2 now to Blauser, and he hits a fly ball straight away center where Glanville camps under it. And we're underway, one man gone, top half of the first inning. Blauser flies to center, that'll bring up Michael Tucker. Tucker hitting 288, began to snap out of it a little bit yesterday. He's been in a long slump, but he went two for five in yesterday's game. He has nine homers, 44 RBIs on the year. Gonzalez delivers and misses low and inside a ball no strikes. In the right field base hit for Tucker. He'll become the first base runner of the afternoon as Sammy Sosa gets it back to the infield. A one out single for Tucker puts a runner at first with one down for Chipper Jones. You mentioned earlier this is a doubleheader that wasn't scheduled. Let me show you why it had to be scheduled. Here's what the ballpark looked like in early April when we started to come out here. That white stuff is snow, and it was piled fairly deep. What a difference three or four months make. Chipper Jones batting 309 for the year. He has 15 homers and 76 runs driven, and he was 0 for 5 yesterday. Tucker at first with one man out. Chipper takes ball one. Always interesting to watch the runners at first base, especially good base runners like Michael Tucker when they're, there's a pitcher out there they've never seen before. You see a lot of uncertainty on the base runner's part. Not quite sure what kind of a move he might have. They played a little close to the vest first time around. Second part of that, in a way you'll see some base runners try it. Chipper takes a strike one to one. Is to get what's called a one-way lead. Go maybe a step and a half further than you normally would go. And all you want to do is draw attention to yourself, draw the throw over because all your momentum and all your weight is leaning toward first. That the way you that way you get a look at his move to first. But what you're saying is 100 percent correct. They're not sure of his timing and the, they have to look at a couple pitches before they know. Now the one-one on the way, and Chipper takes low and inside ball two, two and one. Fred McGriff on deck. Braves are 5 and 0 oh against the Cubs this year. They played them early on in the season when the Cubs were in the midst of that 14 game losing streak to start the year. Cubs have been right around 500 just two games under since that 14 game streak was snapped. Boy, there's a good throw to first base by Gonzalez. Very quick move. Tucker got a look at that and takes a look back and say, "Wow. <laughs> that wasn't bad for a young 22 year old right hander." It looked like he may have given him his best one on the first move. A lot of times you'll see guys throw over and just kind of play with them, but he threw that one. That's one that you see guys use when they start into the stretch. Now the 2-1 on the way. There's a strike in the outside corner. Service throwing back to first. And Tucker got back in safely. Count goes to 2-2 two two on Chipper Jones. Gonzalez has a very animated delivery, a lot of movement in it, and a pretty high leg kick, but he does it in such a big hurry that that high leg kick is not going to give you that much of an opportunity. It looked like Michael Tucker may have thought about going, and then once he got out there, a little leisurely getting back to the bag. One man out, Tucker lengthening his lead a little bit over at first now. And the 2-2 on the way to Chipper Jones. Same spot as Michael Tucker's ball into right field for a base hit. Tucker will have to stop at second out of the respect for the arm of Sammy Sosa. And we've got a gun out there. First and second now with one man gone for Fred McGriff. And if there's been anything encouraging about the Braves play since the All-Star break, and the Braves have just been a so-so team, 6-6 six and six. since the break, it's been the offensive performance of Fred McGriff. That average up to 287. He has a six game hitting streak. The home runs up to 13 after a long home run to dead center field yesterday. 58 RBIs. But the power seems to be returning to Fred's swing. There was a stretch there and it wasn't that long ago where he had less than 20 combined extra base hits. And that's not what you expect out of the guy in the middle of your batting order. 
And he takes a strike inside corner 0 and 1. Two men on, one out here in the top of the first. Not only a long home run yesterday, Pete, but off of a left-hander, too. Very encouraging. Here's the 0-1 on the way, and there's a drive deep right center field. Sosa going back. The wind's going to hold balls like that up, though, today. Caught by Sosa, gunning a throw to third base. Tucker, the throw is cut off by Dunstan as Tucker goes head first into third base. But any ball hit high in the air, as that one was by Fred McGriff, is not going to carry today because that wind is blowing directly in from right center field. This ballpark has more personalities than Sybil because if you get the wind blowing out, there's no such thing as a good pitcher here. You get the wind blowing in, sometimes a bad pitcher becomes a good pitcher. And on a day like today, it is definitely advantage if you can get some high fly balls. Line drives are still going to travel, but anything up in the air, you're going to have to shoot a cannon to get it out. Now Ryan Klesko hitting 386 for the month of July is overall average as you see up to 269 18 homers on the year first and third two outs. And the first one is popped foul back out of play on one on Ryan. Ryan hit one of the longest home runs in his career here at Wrigley Field with the wind blowing out a couple of years back in the left center field it cleared the camera area in left center and went clear out of the ballpark over the screen behind the camera and that is a poke wind or no wind that's a poke here's the 0 1 missing inside one ball one strike there's where our cameraman is set up out there in left center field and that ball cleared that camera area and went clear over the bleachers clear out of the ballpark what would you say that was? About 450 feet to that screen out there? Maybe just to get it to the camera well yeah. to the screen. So you look at it, 475, 480. Down the right field line, foul one and two. The count now on Ryan Klesko. Gonzalez is an interesting story. He got in trouble in the minor leagues because he has such a temper, and he would get mad and snap. He was suspended by his ball club a couple of years ago for one of his tirades. It's amazing that was the reputation then now the word you hear to describe him is presence they say he has a 30 year old's presence on the mound very mature acting young man ahead in the count one and two on Plesco misses upstairs two and two Andrew Jones waits on deck. The runners get their leads. Chipper Jones off first. Michael Tucker off third. And the 2-2 on the way. Line drive. Right field. Base hit for Klesko. That gets Tucker home. The Braves take a 1-0 lead here in the top of the first. Ryan Klesko drives in his 62nd run of the year. As the Braves string together three singles here in the opening inning. His mistakes are staying in the park, but he's getting ahead of hitters and making mistakes. He wants to go down and away, but that is knee high and right down the middle. He's fortunate that Plesko didn't elevate that one, but that's three mistakes ahead in the count he's made. Runner still at first and second with two outs, one run in. Andrew Jones stepping up. He's hitting 277, eight homers, and 41 RBIs. Gonzalez delivers. There's that high fastball that we heard a lot of talk about. Gonzalez gets a lot of strikes with that pitch. And if he sees you swing at it, he might just keep going up the ladder on you. Off speed, fouled away by Andrew out of play, right side. And the count nothing in two. One of these matchups, Don, you got a 22 year old pitcher and a 20 year old hitter. They might see a lot of each other over the next 10, 15 yes. years. He's going to win some, and he's going to win some. The 0 2 on the way, fly ball, right center, Glanville. There for the catch, and that's out number three. But the Braves put together three base hits in the top half of the first inning and score one. 
on a Ryan Plesko RBI single. one nothing Atlanta, Cubs coming up. Here's the Cubs batting order. Glanville to lead it off. Dunst and then Grace Tapala, Sosa, Clark, and Sandberg, the heart of the order. Tyler Houston, Scott Service, and Jeremy Gonzalez will complete it. Plesko, Andrew Jones, and Michael Tucker make up the outfield. Chipper, Jeff Blauser, Lemke, and McGriff from third to first. Eddie Perez behind the plate. And a red-hot Greg Maddox on the mound. A six-game winning streak, averaging seven innings to start. Very few walks. Ho-hum, what's new? But also, one very important thing right at the bottom, getting some runs to play with. And he has a one-run lead to work with here as we go to the bottom half of the first inning. Doug Glanville leads off and takes low and inside ball one. Glanville 306 for the year now. A couple of home runs, 20 RBIs. He has a 10-game hitting streak. Top of the order for the Cubs. This first three hitters have been hitting the ball very well. Maddox with another nice play. Took a base hit away from Glanville, one down. I have a standing small wager with announcers when uh, Braves play other ball clubs, and that is 14 ground outs, or 14 outs handled by Short, Second, and Maddox, with four of them going to Maddox. Three for three. One gone for Sean Dunstan, a 296 hitter on the air with six home runs. Yeah, he, he tries to take the lines right out of the ball, ball game, doesn't he? He yeah. wants everything hit up the middle, on the ground. This one popped high in the air, shallow right field. Lemke drifting back down to foul territory. Makes a nice running catch out there. And quickly two gone here in the bottom half of the first inning. We probably remind the folks at home of this every time we come in here, but when the wind is blowing, as it is today straight in, there is no such thing as a routine fly ball. Mark Lemke, when he camped under that ball, thought he had it, was a good 15 feet fair. When he ended up catching it, he had to be 10, 12 feet in the foul territory. There's a look for wind coming in from right center field. So keep an eye on the outfielders and the infielders on things going into the air. Two away for Mark Grace, up to 329 for the year now with nine homers and 51 RBIs. Ball one to Grace. All the talk this year with Tony Gwynn and Larry Walker hovering around 400 all season long. Mark Grace has hit just under 400 the last month. 396 over the last 29 games. One ball, one strike. Seem like there are a lot of first basemen around now who are similar. It's really kind of changed, hasn't it? Yeah. Line drive hitters. Good pitch by Maddox, one and two. Used to be every club had a first baseman that was big and bulky and hit the long ball. Now you've got a lot of hitters like Grace at that first base spot. Strike three call. Grace caught looking. That doesn't happen very often. That is only the 27th time he has struck out in 317 at bats. One, two, three. Go the Cubs in the first. One nothing Atlanta. Our telecast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Atlanta National League Baseball Club, intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or retransmission of the pictures or descriptions of this game without the express written consent of the Atlanta National League Baseball Club is prohibited. And Eddie Perez leads off here in the top half of inning two in game one, takes ball one from Gonzalez. Perez, 235, five homers, 13 RBIs. His workload about to lighten a little bit as Javi Lopez returns to action. Lopez will catch in game two. And the Braves making the decision, Don, to go with three catchers now with the move today, activating Lopez and sending Mike Mordecai down to Richmond. It's a move they always make prior to September because they want to have three catchers eligible for postseason play. All they're doing is, a month, is just a month earlier this year. I think it's a good move. And hopefully Mike Mordecai can go down and get some at-bats down to Richmond and get that, uh, get that stroke back. He's been struggling, especially as a pinch hitter. There's Javi anxious to return. He took... Some batting practice in the indoor cage prior to the game today. Here's the 2-1 pitch, and Perez pops it foul back out of play, 2-2. Two two. Lopez will have to wear a shield over the thumb. And I don't think he's going to be back at full strength, catching every day almost, as he was before, but he will get back into action today. 2-2, two two, the count Eddie Perez who has done a stellar job in Lopez's absence. Fly ball setter. Third put out of the day for Glanville. And all the outs have come on fly balls as we talked about in the first inning. This guy doesn't get a lot of ground balls. 
And with the wind blowing in, this is a perfect day for him. Well, you mentioned the progress of Javi Lopez. What would you hear about Tom Glavin? Uh, Glavin is uh, going to be okay. He'll be able to make his next start. Uh, it wasn't really as much a hamstring injury as it was a problem with his Achilles tendon that had been bothering him. Uh, it began to bother him early in the game yesterday as early on as the second inning. And he's okay as long as he doesn't have to do a lot of running. Well, that's one way to get out of that pitcher's conditioning program. One way to get out of backing up third, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but he will not have to miss a turn. He's all right. Next pitch is up by the count, 2-0. And, and all began in the second inning when he crosses home plate. We'll see a little grimace on Tom's face. He was able to gut it out and give the Braves four more innings on the mound. What scared me when I saw that look when we did the replay yesterday was I remember Jim Lefevre, the second baseman for the Dodgers, hitting home plate with his heel. And it was an injury that became a nagging injury that took a couple of years to go away. I was glad to hear that that wasn't what happened to Glavin. Mark Lemke draws a walk on four straight. First walk issued by Gonzalez. That'll bring up Greg Maddox in a bunt situation. It's going to take a little more than uh, a little pain in the heel to keep Tom Glavin from missing a turn. Remember that year a couple years ago, three, four years ago, I guess it is now, the pitched about the entire final month and a half of the season with a cracked rib. Maddox squaring gets the butt down the first baseline and trickles foul 0 and 1. You get to find out about a guy's character and his personality when you have something like that for some players it's an alibi and an excuse for a guy like Lavin it just changes the rules a little. That's all. He will pitch again in the Cincinnati series. This road trip doubleheader today, single game here tomorrow, an off day Thursday. Then the Braves play Friday night, Saturday afternoon, Sunday afternoon in Cincinnati before returning home. Here's the 0-1 runner going, put a little hit and run on. Maddox missed the pitch, stolen base, Lemke. So Mark got a pretty good jump on Gonzalez that time. And he picks up his second steal of the year. Three good things happened for the Braves. Lemke got a good jump. Service was a little late unloading, and Dunstan was a little late getting to the bag. Watch how long it takes Service to throw. Pump, throw, not much on it. And Dunstan late getting there. He had to take that throw in front of the bag. He wasn't there waiting for it. They were all anticipating bunt. Now the 0-2 to Greg Maddox, and the breaking ball is low. A ball and two strikes. How many times have we seen Bobby do that in the last couple of weeks? Put the bun on for one pitch, take it off, or else just the just the opposite. opposite. Yeah. Well, not, you not put the bun on for the first pitch, and after one strike, then put the bun back on. I bet you when you check the Braves starting pitchers' numbers, they make contact more than any other starting rotation in the National League. If you know they'll do that, then you can take a few more chances. One, two, now to Maddox, slow and away, two and two. Braves now leading the Eastern Division by six over Florida, six and a half over the Mets. The Marlins begin a series tonight in Cincinnati. The Mets are in Los Angeles later tonight. And after getting ahead 0 and 2 on Maddox, Gonzalez has now filled the count. Two pitch to Maddox, foul out of play. You saw the spelling on Gonzalez's name, J E R E M I. That's the English version. The actual spelling of his first name is G E R E M I S, pronounced Jeremy. But to make it easier for radio and television announcers all over America, they changed the spelling. And we thank them. Still three and two on Maddox. Seven and two, a 336 earned run average. Lemke down at second, one man out. Braves leading at one nothing. We're in the top half of the second. And again, the payoff pitch to Maddox, and he worked his way aboard. He was in an 0-2 hole. After fouling off a couple of 3-2 pitches, draws a walk, second issued by Gonzalez, and Phil Regan on his way to the mound for a chat with a young right-hander. This is a good time for a trip to the mound. I think what happens, Pete, a lot of times, especially with the young pitchers, 
you pitch to the presence of a Greg Maddox pitching against you, not to the eight hitters in the other lineup. Uh, no Maddox is there. You think, well, we're not going to get many runs. All of a sudden, the, the motivating force for making pitches is the fact that Maddox is against you. And this young man has been very successful pitching aggressively, throwing strikes. We saw the graphic that we gave us too many walks in his last 20, 27 innings, but his mound presence, his maturity, and his composure have been three of his greatest assets. But it's so easy when you go against a Greg Maddox to pitch to the presence of Greg Maddox and not to the Braves. Here's Jeff Lauser fly to center his first time up. He, he can never wait to get to Wrigley Field or to face the Cubs, period. He's a 358 lifetime hitter against Chicago. He has 15 career homers against the Cubs. He has had some of his biggest days in his major league career, including a three home run game right here at Wrigley Field. 1 0 pitch. In for a strike, 1 and 1. And the odd thing about it, says Jeff, is that. In his minor league career, he had some of his best minor league games against Cubs farm teams. So it may not just be Wrigley, it may be that Cubbies on the uni. One and one the count. There are your runners, Maddox and Lemke. There's a shot to third. Double play chance at second, thrown away in a right field. But Lemke, who just barely did get back to second base in time, He's going to have to stay put. He's not going to be able to advance. It would have been close anyway with that strong throwing arm of Sammy Sosa. Let's see if Lemke's okay. He may look like he may have banged his knees going back in there. Tyler Houston made the catch. Was a little bit late with the throw, but Lemke was frozen off the bag. And a good throw would have doubled him up. A hanging curveball right at Tyler Houston. Looked like a knuckler once he caught it. He looked to first, first. Then when he looked to second, the throw a little bit out away from Sandberg. Let's see if we can get a look at Lemke going back to see. Well, we didn't have a good enough shot or an angle there to see what he may have done going back into the bag. A ball and no strikes on Tucker. First and second, two outs now. Tucker a base hit and came around to score in the first inning. Two and zero the count. Well, here he goes back. Let's see what happens when he slides. Jam that right foot into the bag pretty hard, didn't he? Looked like that might have been the problem. Here's the two zero pitch, and Tucker drives one again to center field. Glanville's had a busy day of it out there. That's his fourth put out. Gonzalez is out of the inning. The Braves strand two, still one nothing as we head to the bottom of the second. One nothing Atlanta. We go to the bottom half of the second. Sammy Sosa, Dave Clark, and Ryan Sandberg do up against Greg Maddox. We've got a one, two, three first inning. Sosa 255 on the air, but Typically good power numbers for Sammy. 18 home runs, 71 RBIs. It's one thing that this Cubs team really does not have a lot of is power. And in this ballpark, you could use a little more. It's something the Cubs will be looking for, if not during the rest of this season, during the offseason. They'd like to have a few more home run bats in that batting order. Owen won the count on Sosa. Misses outside one ball one strike gave you a comparison the Braves this year have hit 106 home runs Cubs have only hit 70 Cubs have given up 110 home runs so they've been out homered by a wide margin this year. Two and one the count on Sammy Sosa no surprise to see him having a little success against Maddox Greg will tell you that guys who give him the most trouble are the players he calls hackers they can reach it they swing at it. On two hops to Blasier at short. One away. And the batter will be Dave Clark out in left field today. Clark, a hot hitter. Up to 304 for the year now with a couple of home runs, 16 RBIs. He's only had 79 at bats this year. Most of them, 41 of them, have come as a pinch hitter. But he's 12 for his last 25. 
he's a guy too that if you believe the rumors for a, a couple of years John Sherholtz has sure tried to get into a Braves uniform but it never has worked out. Well he is what Jim Riggleman described in one of the Chicago newspapers this morning as a professional hitter. This guy and Dave Hanson are two guys on this Cubs team who every manager loves to have because you can use them in so many ways. You can play them every day. You can play them sporadically. You can pinch hit them. Doesn't matter how often they hit. They hit. Oh and two. They count on Clark. And if you watch them defensively they may not be the most polished but they'll play them off their face if they have to just to make sure they keep it in front of them and get it out. Now the 0-2 on the way. Just off the inside corner. One ball, two strikes. Denny Nagel against Terry Mulholland in today's second game. For the Cubs, this is their second doubleheader in four days. They had a lot of early season weather problems. Causing more than one twin bill to be scheduled. Clark Chase one out of the strike zone. Maddox has a second strikeout. And five in a row retired. That'll bring up Ryan Sandberg. Not the player he used to be, hitting 246 this year, five homers, 37 RBIs. His offensive numbers the last couple of years have been way off Ryan Sandberg's career numbers. Still a good inside hitter, though. Club successfully pitch him out away. Like that, strike one. Top six in four different categories. And there have been some pretty good hitters run through this ball yes, park, too. Have. So it's good company. Up and in, one ball, one strike. If you're going to come in on Sandburn, that's where to do it. Yep. Not for a strike. In off the plate. Man right there put together a good career here. Another ground ball third. Nice backhanded pick by Chipper Jones on the first in time. And another one, two, three inning for Greg Maddox. We played two in game one. It's one nothing at all. Top of the third. Good time for us to take a look at our Hardy's leaderboard. Our category, National League Outfield Assist. And two of the best in the business going against each other today. Sammy Sosa always near the top of the list. And Andrew Jones making his presence felt. Another young guy with a future, a rookie of the year possibility, Vladimir Guerrero, also in the top five. Our Hardy's leaderboard. Chipper Jones, a base hit his first time up. Leads off the third and takes strike one. Another fly ball to center. Who's going to take this one? Clark calls off. Glanville makes the catch. One down. Hasn't been a ground ball out yet recorded by Gonzalez. The batter will be Fred McGriff. He flied to right his first time up. And usually if you see a guy giving up a lot of fly balls, it tells you one of two things, or maybe a combination of both, that he's throwing a backspin, four-seam fastball, and more often than not, pitching above the belt in the strike zone. And he does both of those. Whatever works. That's right. Your margin of error is smaller if you pitch up with a backspin fastball, especially in a park like this, because your mistakes are going to travel further than those sinkers. One ball, no strikes on McGriff. But so many times you see pitching coaches and managers try to take a guy with Gonzalez's stuff, which is a four-seam backspin fastball, and try to make him pitch down with it. That's backwards. Two and out the count. And there is a good, he was a good pitcher in his day and has become a respected pitching coach, Bill Regan. They will appeal to third, no swing, says Greg Bonet, and the count 3-0 and now and Fred McGriff. One of the things you have to do, though, against a good ball club like the Braves is that sooner or later he's going to have to start getting that breaking ball over. You cannot be a one-pitch pitcher against a good hitting ball club. Down the right field line, that's a fair ball off the bat of Fred McGriff. He'll take the turn at first, and Sammy Sosa's arm will hold him to a single. 
McGriff's still not running 100%. He's got that little hamstring problem that's been plaguing him the last couple of weeks. He's been getting the count in his favor a lot, and he's been getting a lot of 3-0 and o pitches to hit. And I can think of three in the last three days that he's gotten. Three balls and no strikes. That is the fourth hit off of Gonzalez. It'll bring up Ryan Klesko, who drove in the Atlanta run with a first inning single. Nothing in one on Klesko. Was not all that long ago that Ryan Klesko's average was down in the high 230s, low 240s. But a great month of July, hitting close to 400 for the month, has gotten the season average up to 272. him up middle of the infield Sean Dunstan for out number two and that'll bring up Andrew Jones and that's a kind of out you can get with a fastball up in the strike zone Pete uh, or backspin one if you put it in on the hands rather than letting the hitters extend Andrew 0 for one he fly to center his first time center field Clark going back Glanville going back the win held that one up any other day at Wrigley Field that's a home run but Andrew Jones has to settle for a long out and it's out number three here in the top of the third still one nothing Atlanta as we go to the bottom of the third One nothing Atlanta. Tyler Houston leads off the bottom of the third. The former Brave hitting 226, a homer, 17 RBIs. Lines Maddox's first pitch in the left field for a base hit, and the Cubs have their first base runner of the afternoon. Tyler Houston taking a page out of the Tony Gwynn book of hitting against Greg Maddox. You're going to get a strike on the first pitch. It's just probably not going to be the strike you'd like. So if it's in the neighborhood, put it in play. That's probably on the outside corner, a little bit outside, but. Probably the best pitch he's going to get at that at bat, so take your chances on the first pitch. That'll bring up Scott Service hitting 261. The Cubs catcher has five homers this year. And there goes Tyler Houston, little bouncing ball towards short. Blouser recovers. Now can he throw him out? Oh, what a great recovery by Jeff Blouser. He was heading over toward the bag at second with a runner on the move. He put the brakes on, was able to reach back and get it, and still throw out Scott Service. That's tough on two accounts. One, you got to reverse so you can make the play. He's covering. Here comes the ball. Overspin bounce. Watch how quickly he reverses. That's only his half of his job. Got to recover and get off a good throw, and he did. Accurately and with a lot on it. That's a good play. That's one of those highlight film plays. That'll bring up the pitcher, Jeremy Gonzalez. He's two out of 18 as a hitter this year. Eight strikeouts in those 18 at bats. Looks like a hitter, doesn't he? Take strike one from Maddox, 0 and 1. He does have a bashful left foot, though. A lot of pitchers have that. It's committed until the ball is thrown, then it kind of tiptoes down the left field line. <laughs> and the result is quite often that when contact is made. <laughs> Right off the end of the bat, directly into the crowd, above the dugout. Oh, and to the count. I'm guessing he won't see anything on the inner half of the plate off Maddox all day long. Ground ball third. Chipper Jones looks the runner back and throws out Gonzalez. Two down. And back to the top of the order now. And Doug Glanville, he'll give Gonzalez a chance to get back to the Cubs dugout. This youngster's come on strong for the Cubs this year. A 10-game hitting streak is on the line coming into today's game. Yeah. 
Glanville had 308 in AAA ball last year. Not a lot of power. Pretty good speed. Out of Teaneck, New Jersey, and out of the University of Pennsylvania. And he has a degree out of the University of Pennsylvania, which is a tough academic school, a degree in engineering. Owen won the cap. And Perez was crossed up. I think they have a fairly complicated set of signs that they go through. A lot of times, Greg Maddox likes to dictate what happens in the game. Occasionally, he has been known to call the pitches from the mound. So just an extra 45 seconds to make sure you're all both on the same page. Two men out, Houston down at second. File back, nothing in two now in Glanville. <laughs> Little chopper for third, but foul, still 0 and 2. Well, when Greg Maddox gets ahead of you, 0 and 2. You will see some funny looking swings at a lot of pitches that aren't strikes. You'll see a lot of pitches in the same spot as the one that got you 0 and 2, but doing something different, too. Again, the 0 2. And that's it for Glanville. That is the third strike out of the game for Maddox. He has breathed through the first three. It's still 1 0 Atlanta. in that one. Pittsburgh at San Diego. And also the night Philadelphia at San Francisco. We'll take a look at the American League after Eddie Perez hits down. Eddie Perez to lead it off. First time up. Flied to center field. But then that hasn't been news today at all. One, two, three, four fly balls to center field. A couple that have drifted over into left center field. So already the outfielder's busy. 2-0 to Eddie Perez. Montreal, a good pitching matchup today. That's high and deep to left field, but the wind is going to push it into the stands. Perez against Swift. Rockies have fallen to last place in the National League West. And I know that a number of people had them picked to win the, the West, and at least, at worst, everybody had them picked to be the wild card team this year in the National League. A whole lot of things going wrong for the Rockies. Good fastball, and it's two and two to Eddie Perez. Hamilton for San Diego's won his last three starts. Smiley has won his last three. And so have Gonzalez and Greg Maddox. If you had to pick the youngsters performance apart at this point it's been the inconsistency of the curveball it's a one to nothing game so it's kind of hard to argue with the job that either has done but six or seven breaking balls have been left up in the strike zone a couple have been hit for base hits there's a dandy and it's two and two still his reputation in the minor leagues was he was a real competitor sometimes too much of a competitor Things didn't go right. He has been known to dismantle and rearrange furniture in the locker room and in the dugout. But see, his composure has improved tremendously. Another one high and deep to left, and once again, the wind is going to push it into the stands. Only 22 years old, but he's been pitching since 1992. He was signed when he was 16 years old out of Maracaibo, Venezuela. Perez had an at bat yesterday where he fouled away a whole bunch of pitches till he got one that he could handle, got himself a base hit. That was a great at bat against Hideo Nomo. Something like a 12 pitch at bat. 
in the air to right center field. Who's going to get this one? Tammy Sosa will wait for the wind to push it back to him. And another fly ball out. Three in a row set down since the single to McGriff and out number one. Here you go, Pete. American League on the Office Depot scoreboard. All night games. Oakland playing at Boston. Steve Avery another win last night. Chicago only three and a half out now behind Cleveland. Cleveland playing at home tonight against Seattle. Seattle only a half game up on Anaheim. And they're playing at New York tonight at Yankee Stadium. And the rest of the American League schedule. Milwaukee at Toronto, Kansas City at Minnesota. Baltimore at Texas. And here's Mark Lemke. Drew a walk his first time up. Slow roller toward first. Got a kick foul 0-1. Anaheim going to New York. The Angels, as you pointed out, a half game back. They got their work cut out for them tonight. They're going against David Cohn. 10 and 4 with a 249. And a 1-7 in his last three starts. So Cohn, as we have seen him do so many times, heating it up the second half of the season. But what a great turnaround for the Angels. Did he go? Don't think so. One and one. Mark Lemke had some good at bats over the weekend, too. He had a good homestand offensively at 250 on the homestand. That's about 30 points higher than he's been hitting. A little late on that fastball, and it's one and two. You know, in watching him there, you saw that kind of half swing. We watched him slide back in the second. We were speculating that it might have been knee, but the way he's holding his left elbow after that swing, he may have banged it on the ground. Inside outer. Tyler Houston's got it. That's the diamond, and there's out number two. Four in a row set down by Jeremy Gonzalez and he'll face Greg Maddox. That's the first ground ball out he's gotten today. Little bit of difference in the number of pitches thrown up there. Ditto in the in the balls to strike ratio. Maddox well we routinely we get used to seeing Maddox better than three to one. Usually two to one is considered a good ratio strikes the ball. That should be easy for Mark Grace. And it's an easy inning for Gonzalez. He sets down Perez, Lemke, and Maddox. We'll move to the bottom of the fourth pitcher's duel. One to nothing, Graves. Two and three. That's the kind of base hit that really annoys Greg Maddox. He got exactly what he wanted. A ball hit right back up the middle on one hop. But it was a high hop, one that he could not handle. And one that was hit hard enough so that Lemke or Blauser couldn't get to it as it came over the bag at second. There's the one hopper. How many of those have we seen? It even got a little piece of Maddox's glove. Both the Cubs base hits coming on the Tony Gwynn School of Hitting. Pick out the first one and hit it. So the possible tying run stands at first. Still nobody out for Mark Grace. Something happened to him last time up you don't see too often. He took call strike three. Runner going. Be in time. He got a running jump on Greg Maddox. Eddie Perez had to unload in a hurry for Dunstan, his 19th stolen base. And we've commented before, base runners will take liberties with Greg Maddox. He sometimes doesn't really pay a whole lot of attention to him. The pitch to Grace was a strike. Mark Grace is a understands baseball. Watch him try to get this ball to the right side. A little too much to the right side. It's 0-2. You see some hitters who don't really either understand or appreciate the importance of the ABC part of hitting like that. Runner at second. Nobody out. Get him to third. So many more ways to score him from third than second. And a sack fly would do it. But Mark Grace, like Jeff Blauser, does that without a sign being flashed to him. Now, oh, and two, you got to go for yourself. And he still will get the runner to third. Lemke will go to McGriff. There's out number one. Dunstan moves up 90 feet. Let's see how the Braves play the infield. You have to be a pretty good hitter to do what Mark Grace just did. He took a pitch that is impossible to pull and still pull it to the right side of the infield. That pitch was down and away off the plate. And he still got it on the ground to the right side to advance that runner. And he got greeted going back into that cup dugout the same way he would have if he'd have hit a home run. He's still getting handshakes and high fives. Braves will bring the infield in for Sammy Sosa. Last time up, he grounded to Blouser at short. 
Sosa in his career, 7 out of 22 against Maddox. First one is high, and it's 1 and 0. Oh. In the corner, a ball and a strike. What do we figure, Pete? Would you tell me 50% is a pretty good percentage? Yeah, anything about 50%, you're doing a good job in that category. So I guess you say he's doing a pretty good job. Slow roller, there's only going to be one play. So. Sosa gets the job done. Slide into the plate there by Dunstan. So the Cubs playing little ball. A single, a stolen base, a ground out, and another ground out, and they've tied it up. And watch Greg Maddox fake Sammy Sosa here like he was going to make the play. Hoping that Sean Dunstan would freeze and not score from third. Good play by Mark Lemke. Cubs tie it up. Base is clean. Maddox will go back to the windup. He'll face Dave Clark. He struck him out the first time up. Struck him out looking. Maddox with three strikeouts. And if you follow the Braves at all, it will probably come as no surprise to you. He hasn't walked anybody. Only 16 walks in better than 140 innings this year. He'll strike one to Clark. And I think I remember that five of those are intentional. There's a whole bunch of them. Yeah, five. So he has been wild as a March hare. He's walked 11 guys unintentionally. He has Clark 0 and 2. Bill Fisher would be very proud of him, wouldn't he? Yes, he would. Congratulations to Fish. That'll go foul. He was just honored at the AAA All-Star Game for 50 years in baseball. Well, you look at that number of unintentional walks, 11 walks in 20 starts. That's about one walk every other game. And Maddox almost always gives you seven innings a start. And those ratios, just about what you would normally expect out of Greg Maddox, always better than two to one strikeouts, uh, ground outs to strikeouts, and usually seven or eight to one ground outs to fly ball out. It'll do it. Perfect paint on the inside corner, but the Cubs get one. They scratch out a run off Greg Maddox, and through four, we're back where we started. It's a 1-1 ball game. Pitch is a seat throw tall, and their delivery causes them to be very tall, very erect, and a lot of times over a stiff front leg. Usually a guy who settles down and sinks down is more of a slider pitcher. Kind of hard to throw a curveball uphill and have any consistency with it. One ball, two strikes. Slider just misses that leaving it at two and two. Curveball is hammered to left field. That could be extra bases for Blouser. It'll go to the wall. Clark having trouble picking it up, but no harm. Blouser had a double anyway. That's where he'll end up leading off the fifth inning. And Jeff Plowser continues his good hitting this year and his good hitting against the Cubs in his career. His 26th double of the year. Had a breaking ball that hung a little bit. And one hops the wall here at Wrigley Field. Clark dropped it, but no further advance by Plowser. He was going to get to second base anyway. And he'll stand there for Michael Tucker. Tucker has, sing Tucker has singled and scored the only run of the ball game. That came in the first. And he's plied to center. Braves will now try to play a little ABC baseball and get Plowser over to third. Tucker shoots it out of play left side. It's 0 and 1. A 
ball and a strike. Ground ball is a fair ball. Good play by Grace. So it's an out by Tucker, but it's a good out. Moves Blouser up 90 feet. He'll stand at third with one out. We'll see how the Cubs play the infield here. And let's give it the answer to today's athletic trivia question. Which five of the top ten all-time saves leaders once pitched for the Cubs? Well, the number one man, Lee Smith. Number three, Dennis Eckersley. Number seven, Goose Gossage. Number eight, Bruce Souter. And number nine, Randy Myers. And at one time, Lee Smith and Bruce Souter were teammates. 1980. Lee Smith was a rookie just coming up. And Bruce Souter was in his final year before... Moving over to the Cardinals. And at one time they had a pretty good collection. At, at, at one time, and I'll have to confirm this. At one time, I think they also had Jay Howell, Suter, Smith, and one other of those great relievers in the organization at the same time. Cubs will bring the infield in for Chipper Jones. He's one out of two. A base hit here would give the Braves the lead again. A fly ball here would do it. That's what we got. Fly ball to center. Blouser will tag. Here's Glanville's throw. Could be close, but not in time. Chipper Jones gets the sacrifice fly. He picks up RBI number 77. And the Braves back on top. It's 2-1. to one. And that's what you love to do when you've just given up a run to allow the other team to tie the game up, come right back up, and take that lead right back. And you talked about ABC ball played by the Cubs in the bottom half of the fourth. Braves do the same thing here in the top half of the fifth. A leadoff double, a ground out gets him the third, a sack fly gets him in. And Fred McGriff will bat with the bases clean. He's one out of two. He's flied the right and he's single. And you know what I hope doesn't get lost, and, and I think more successful ball clubs talk about it and reward it. I hope what doesn't get lost, let's say the Braves hang on and win this two to one, is how important Michael Tucker's at bat was. Slow roller towards second, a tough chance for Sandberg, but remember McGriff is still hobbling, playing at about 80%, so that'll take care of the Braves here in the fifth inning. But they pick up one, they play it to perfection. A double, a ground out, a sack fly. We're halfway home, it's two to one, Braves. And Maddox is pitching very well, boy, but in the first two innings, Joe, we had the wind really hurt us. A couple of home runs were taken away, and you wonder if that'll hurt you before the game's over. Hopefully not. Ryan Sandberg leads off for the Cubs. First pitch swinging, as a lot of these Cubs have done today, but nothing doing for Sandberg as Mark Lemke throws him out. One away. A lot of ball clubs these days figure the best pitch they're going to get to hit from Maddox is that first pitch fastball. It worked for Dunstan last inning when he let off with a single. And Tyler Houston, the same thing when he single leading off the third. But he gets a change up this time, and he was already ready to swing. Maddox tied for the league lead and wins. Third in the league in ERA. Another change up and a beauty 0-2. Tyler playing third base for the ninth time this year. Made a couple of good plays over there already. One and two. Got him. Changed up a little bit on Tyler that sequence. And he records his fifth strikeout as a result. He's amazing with that control, isn't he? I mean, we, I think we get almost immune to it. We see it so often, but when we watch him, we're watching a master. Scott Service grounded out his first time up. He's 0 for his last seven. 0 and 1. 13th first pitch strike. Cubs are 4 and 7 since the All Star break. Took two out of three from the Rockies over the weekend. One, two. Braves fans here from all over. Steve and Doris Hart, Joe and Ben, and Brad Clear here from Niles, Michigan, and South Bend, Indiana. 
Willie Westbrook here celebrating his 15th birthday. The 0 2 pitch struck him out. A good inning for Maddox. They go in order. He's got six strikeouts, and we go to the sixth. One nothing Atlanta. Oh, but he trails two to one. I told you one nothing when we went away, but it's two to one. Great. Ryan Klesko singled in a run back did, in the first inning. We do that once a game just to make sure you're paying attention. Deliberately make a mistake. So that during the break everybody's going, did he say one yeah. nothing? Right. Good job. A drive down the line, but foul. Ryan had a great home stand. Hit 319 on those 12 games, five doubles, four homers, 13 RBIs. Picked up his 62nd RBI in the first. Two and one. Jim McBray are here with the family from Conyers, Georgia. They're here from the Omaha Boy for Home for Boys in Nebraska, Ray and Sheila Allen. Outside, three and one. Not to be confused with Boys Town. I don't know if that's the same or not. I guess it's different. Three one pitch. Took a little off and he fouled it back. Full count. Gonzalez has a little move in his windup as he gets ready to deliver to the plate. It reminds you of Dennis Martinez. Kind of looks over that front shoulder. Kind of tucks everything in. Looks down at the ground over his left shoulder. into center field but Glanville's there boy there's been a lot of line drive outs to the outfield today by the Braves there's another one that'll bring up Andrew Jones if the wind had been blowing like it is now on his last at bat he'd had a home run a two run homer yeah, Andrew just missed dropping one in the basket in left field now it's just a breeze then the flags were starched he has flied out twice I don't know. He is two for 13 on the year against Cubs pitching. Breaking ball to short. Sean Dunstan has a gun, two down. And Eddie Perez will be the batter. Boy, a good story in the Chicago Tri Tribune this morning by Jerome Holtzman talking about. The upcoming ceremonies for the Hall of Fame, and he's talking about Nellie Fox, and they've got some artifacts out in Cooperstown regarding the inductees, including Nellie Fox, and how Connie Mack received a letter from Nellie Fox's mother when he was 16, wanting him to take a look at her son. Eddie Perez takes a ball, and it turns out that Fox's parents drove him to a tryout, and. Philadelphia A's did in fact sign Nolly Fox. I didn't know that. Called strike one and one. He was a tough little hitter. And after he got to the big leagues, he hit about 240, 250 his first year, and they traded him to the White Sox, where he became a Hall of Fame. Two and one. Perez today has flied out twice, once to center, once to right. Two Venezuelans going head to head here. Three and one. Good pitch for Perez to hit. And he does rake it. And again, the line drive to the outfield, and Dave Clark is there on the track to make the catch. Braves can't find a gap. Three up and three down in the sixth. And we go to the bottom half of the inning. Braves two, Cubs one. Jeremy Gonzalez will lead off for the Cubbies. They trail Greg Maddox and the Braves two to one. Gonzalez grounded a third, his only time up. He is two for 19 as a big league hitter. Shows button takes a strike. Maddox has fanned six. He has not walked a batter. In fact, he's only walked three in his last 48 innings. One ball. And 
in the air and that was the second batter of the game Dunstan who popped up in foul territory to Mark Lemke. The one one pitch. Line drive up the middle. Good swing by Gonzalez on a fastball that Maddox left up a little bit. And the pitcher gets a base hit. And you see a scowl on the face of Greg Maddox. Here's another look at it. See Eddie wants it down and he left it just above the belt. He didn't hit it that hard. But he got just enough of it to steer it through the infield. Jim Riggleman's been aggressive with his base runners, but his pitchers at first right now. And Glanville hits a double play ball. Four, six, three, two down. Didn't want to take a chance with his pitcher on base. And it comes back to haunt him, and Glanville is 0 for 3. One of the nice things, we talk about what a good job Lemke does of turning the double play. Seems like he always gives Jeff Blauser a good feed on that play, too. And they are both absolutely fearless out there. As a result, they get knocked around a good bit, but they get the job done. Sean Dunstan, one for two. He scored the Cubs' only run. He's single leading off the fourth, stole second, went to third on a grounder by Grace, scored on a grounder by Sosa. We were talking on radio about how when we were in here earlier this year, this guy was really struggling, and now he's just a shade under 300. ball games but this is playable in shallow right field Andrew and Tucker converge but it's Tucker making the catch and the inning comes to an end the Cubs get a hit but they only send three batters to the plate and we go to the seventh two to one Atlanta and the rooftops are just about full the ballpark isn't, but it's a goodly crowd nonetheless. And the first pitch to Lemke inside, he has walked and grounded out. 2-1 Atlanta, our score. We're in the seventh. Maddox and Jeremy Gonzalez have lived up to advance billing. High fly, twisting down the right side. Long run for Sosa near the seats. He has no plays. Just out of play. Wind still blowing in. Not as hard as it was earlier, but blowing in nonetheless. Denny Nagel, Terry Mulholland. In the second game here today, Kevin Tappany against Kevin Millwood tomorrow. That telecast tomorrow will be at 2.15 Eastern Time. Gonzalez ready to go to work. First baseline is in the hole one and two. Pat Corrales will make a friend as he flips it to a youngster in the seats. The youngster in a Greg Maddox uniform shirt. One and two, the count. out on strikes. That's his first. Take another look. Greg Bonet's been, I think, pretty benevolent on some of the check swings today, but Mark went too far on that one. Maddox has walked and popped out. He has not stolen a base today. So unless he reaches and steals one here, his string of consecutive games in which he has stolen a base will end at one. Gonzalez deals. One and one, the count. It rained hard here early this morning, but we've gotten a break on the weather this afternoon. It's lovely. Cloudy, but lovely activity now in the bullpen. For the Cubbies. Bob Patterson is up in front. Curve, chap toward third. Houston in. Up. Got him. Two down. Bob Patterson's name among many. 
many of these tough players that are mentioned as possible acquisitions before the july thirty first deadline there was a story in the chicago paper today that second game would be Danny Nagel against Terry Mulholland if Terry Mulholland didn't just change clubhouses and surface in the Atlanta clubhouse. That has not happened. It's funny how it, it doesn't matter what team comes to town, the hometown riders are trying to get that guy traded to whoever comes in. Yeah. Here's Jeff Blauser, one out of three. He's hit the ball hard every time. He scored one of the two Atlanta runs. He's hit with a double. And he lines one to right, and that's in for a hit. Let's see if he can get two out of this. No, and it looks so sad out there. So Blauser, two out of four again, and again he goes for the off field with great luck. Michael Tucker, the batter. He's hit a bolt down into the left field corner that got to the wall, a rocket that was caught by Tyler Houston, and now goes the other way. Everything is working for Jeff Blauser, no matter where you pitch him. That pitch was up, and he went inside out on it. Got some top hand through on that swing, too. I bet he hasn't had more than 10 check swings all year long. Yeah. I think that's the biggest difference. When he makes up his mind to swing the bat, he swings the bat. Much more aggressive hitter this year. Patterson continues his work, and the left-handers are coming up for Atlanta. There are, however, two out of the inning. Tucker hits a foul to left. It's 0-1. Nice catch by a fan on the left field line from Streeter, Illinois. Oh, and won the count. Yesterday, Hideo Nomo had thrown 105 pitches, I think. Gonzalez, after a couple of shaky innings, has pitched quite well with any luck at all. The Braves would have had five or six in the first couple. But since then, he's been tough. The old bluff to first trick does not work. 355 feet down the left field line here. 353 in right, but in the power alley, it's very small. 368 each way. Tucker rounds one foul into the Atlanta dugout. And he's in the hole 0 2. Braves home on Monday night. These same Cubs come to town for three games. Just got a shot of Javi Lopez, who is scheduled to start game two of this doubleheader. The 0 2 pitch. Too. I've known Bobby for a long time, but I've seldom seen him as upset about something he had to do as he was after optioning Mike Mordecai this morning. Because Morty's been a part of this team for three years. He'll be back, but it still hurt Mordecai and it hurt Bobby oh, not as much, but almost. against the wind by Michael Tucker right down the line curved inside the pole and the Braves vault to a four to one lead. Boy does that help two out lightning Tucker's second hit of the day his 10th homer is 46 RBI and he seems to have snapped out of the little slump he was in he got two hits yesterday with a double today a base hit and a run scored in the first inning and he golfed this one I don't know how he kept it fair right down the line into the corner reminds you a little bit of Raul Mondesi's home run yesterday off of Tom Glavin. And you can know that Jim Riggleman over in the Cubs dugout is thinking doggone it I had that left hander up for this situation but I'm sure he was hoping to get Gonzalez through this inning. And he still doesn't make the move. And I don't understand why to be honest with you. Well the switch hitter up there wouldn't matter who he brought in. But. You'd rather, I think you'd rather have Chipper in right I yeah. would if I were yeah. One ball, no strength. That changes the game around a little bit. It all happened with two out, nobody on. Low and inside, it's two and oh. Okay. 
Top of the order doing all right today. Bowser two for four, two runs scored. Tucker two for four. Two driven in and two scored. And a drive into deep center off the bat of Chipper Jones. The wind holds it up. And the inning is over. But a very profitable one for Atlanta. Two runs, two hits. No airs, nobody left. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Time for the Moonlight Sonata here. Braves on top, four to one. Won the count, four one Atlanta. Now our score. That Moonlight Sonata was outstanding again. Oh, that's amazing. The people just love it. Dad, and take me out to the ball. One and one the count. Priceless gem right there. A ball and two strikes. I know it's hard for you to say that about your dad, and I know you feel it, so I'll say it. Strongest man I ever met in my life. One and two the count. The thing that cracks me up. No, it doesn't crack me up. That I don't understand is when they have a rain delay, the paces they put he and Steve Stone through to fill during those rain delays. That's almost criminal. Don't give anybody any ideas. <laughs> Short left, Fusco calls off Blouser, and you'll see Blouser run like a scared rabbit when he hears that big guy coming one out. A tough hitter disposed of here. Grace 0 for 3. Here's Sammy. He's driven in the only cub run with a little tap over the pitcher's head. my dad from an orphanage to the Hall of Fame is a pretty long trip. One out, nobody on the pitch. Hit well to center. Andrew on the move. Wind holds it up. Two down. And after only one fly ball out through six innings, uh, five and two thirds, three straight fly ball outs. That's not necessarily a good sign, but it's not so bad with the wind blowing in today and you wonder if he just now with a three run lead is saying I'm just going to throw mm -hmm. my fastball away and let him wail. Dave Clark has been a strikeout victim twice. He is now three out of 20 in his career against Greg Maddox. And he pops one up. A very very easy inning. Who wants it? Blouser. And the inning is over Maddox was pointing at Chipper, but Chipper and Blouser had already made up their minds. Greg almost had a heart attack. Down there. No hits, no runs. No airs, nobody left. Seven innings have gone by. The Braves are cruising. Four to one. Set Pittsburgh out in San Diego. Philadelphia at San Francisco. San Francisco had to stay and play in St. Louis last night before going home over in the American League. Oakland at Boston. Steve Avery pitched a good game last night for the Red Sox. Chicago at Detroit. The Mariners are at Cleveland in a battle of division leaders. Anaheim's the hottest team in the American League. Milwaukee at Toronto. Kansas City at Minnesota. Baltimore, Texas. That's your Delta Airlines schedule. And we've got a couple of changes for the Cubs. Jose Hernandez checks into the game to play left field. And Ramon Tatis, a left-hander, is the new pitcher. And he faces Fred McGriff. He is out of the Dominican. They got him from the Mets in the Rule 5 draft. Last year he pitched an A-ball at Fort St. Lucie. St. Lucie? St. Lucie, where he was 4-2. and two. Easy for me to say. He's 6-3. Ground ball by Fred. His foul pass first. Pat Corrales equal to the challenge there. And he'll make another friend. He's going to wind up running for Governor of Georgia. You were summer. thinking of David Luthie, who played shortstop yes. in the Cardinal organization yeah, a few years I'm ago. I'm sure that's who I was thinking about. That's like the uh, CBS announcer one night that was trying to promote the next show and said, coming up next, I love loosely. I mean, I love Lucy. <laughs> one and two, the count. Tatis. This is inside. Two and two. Another game to follow. Denny Nagel, Terry Mulholland.
producer Glenn Diamond just returned from the honey bucket. Good to have him back. Ground ball, foul, pass first. It's a little restaurant right across the street. Deal here. Two balls, two strikes. Big test for Glenn Diamond today with two games. <laughs> yes, it is. middle but they had him play per perfectly Dunstan throws out the grip one away Ryan Klusko the batter he's one for three with an RBI his 62nd of the year what would this town do if the Cubbies had some good fortune with some people that they signed brought in here had some production out of their minor league system and actually put together a strong run got to the playoffs again and this is a great sports town as you know they'd go crazy one ball, no strengths. Their attendance is a little off. They're averaging about 27,000 per day. Yeah, when you're strong as they are. They're loyal. When you're 10 games out by the end of April, it's a little tough to, for the fans to mount a whole lot of enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. A ball and a strength. Downstairs, two and one, Andrew Jones on deck. What they lose 14 in a row at the start? I believe it was. Yeah. If they went 500 over that period, they'd be. They went seven and seven. Right in it in this division. Did that hit him or did he? Yep. He got out of the way. Three and one. Be 48 and 50. See how close it came. Ooh. Pretty close. one right out of here. Three and two now. If they had gone seven and seven their first 14 games, they'd be 48 and 50 and tied with the Cardinals two and a half out. The fans here really deserve better. Got it. At the knees, outside corner. Fusco caught looking, two down. And here's Andrew, 0 for 3. The wind killed him back in the third. He really crushed one to deep left field. You could see the wind just push it right back. Into the glove of Doug Glanville in left center. So Andrew stands in. The lights have been on since we started today. I drive to center field, but again, that wind might be a factor. Glanville to the wall. Andrew's got to be talking to himself. Two of his blasts could have been out of here, but weren't. One, two, three, nothing doing. Bottom of the eighth, four to one. For the eighth inning, Ryan Klesko's now at first, Danny Bautista in left, and this pitch by Maddox to Ryan Sandberg is 61st of the game. That is amazing. That is absolutely We're in the incredible. Eighth Eighth inning here. One ball, no strengths. Line into left field, a solid hit. That may get the bullpen goal. Sandberg hit that one right on the nose, and here is Tyler Houston, who was struck out and single. That pitch had a lot of plate. Sandberg doesn't miss too many when they're right down the middle. Houston waits. His base hit was to left field. There's the strike right in there. It's 0 and 1. You might get fortunate if you jump on the first pitch, but if you are unsuccessful, you make the day a little easier for Greg Maddox. That's just the case on the ground ball double play hit into by Glanville in the sixth after a leadoff single by Gonzalez. The 0 1 pitch swung and missed. It's 0 and 2. And now he's got him where he likes to have him. The youngsters in the crowd try to get the let's go Cubs chant going, but they're not having much luck. 13 balls. You got to be kidding me. What an artist. 
That's well hit, but Andrew comes on. He's got it. He's got a shot at a double play. Safe. And the ball gets away, but Eddie Perez does his job. Andrew tried to get a, a little extra on that throw and threw it right into the ground. You see that happen a lot. That ball, too, was hit hard, but it's one out. Something else, too. When Andrew was playing catch in the first inning, when he threw the ball into the bullpen, he overshot the mark and threw it into the crowd. When you're looking in from center field here, the dugout and the crowd look like they're right on top of the bag, and that may have entered into his thought a little bit to make sure he didn't overthrow Ryan Klesko, and as a result, fired it low. Scott Service, the batter, Jose Hernandez, is on deck. A strike. That's number 66. 0 oh and 1 the count. Every time you get a chance to watch this guy, you're watching one of the best pitchers who ever, ever played this game. Well, we don't know what's going to happen the rest of this game. He's got a 4 to 1 lead. But when this season started, the talk was about Bobby Jones, who got off to a great start as the possible Cy Young guy. Kevin Brown in Florida is the possible Cy Young guy. Even Denny Nagel, his teammate, who still has a great shot. But they're going to have to do better than Greg Matt. The center well hit again, but Andrew's there for the second out. Another line drive. And everything in the air, you're right, Joe, since uh, two out of the sixth. Six straight outs. Batting for the first time, Jose Hernandez. He's hitting 275, four homers, just 12 RBI. Three doubles, two triples, four homers. Runner at first, two out. Maddox is allowed just four hits. if he's gone to three balls for anybody today. Probably not. I don't remember anyone. There goes the runner down three. Ground ball to the mound. Doesn't matter. And the inning is over just like that. One hit, no runs, no errors, one left. We go to the ninth inning. Braves on top, four to one. the count. Oh and two. Leo Mazzoni has talked to or said some things to Maddox along the way after the two games he pitched for this year. He fired the 87 and 84 pitches and he's always reminded Greg that the unofficial record was Glavin. He may have that in the back of his mind. A ball and two strikes. Although when you talk to him Things like that really don't matter. All that no. matters is winning. Just the double. He doesn't care about the ERA. He doesn't care about awards, although he's always glad to get them. In fact, I'll tell you, just a little tip off into his personality last night on the bus. One of our relievers said, well, I feel like I'm going to get a win and a hold tomorrow. And Greg just smiled and said, if you are, you've got him in reverse order. <laughs> <laughs> Three balls, two strikes. Terry Adams is the right-hander throwing for the Cubbies, or the Cubs if you prefer. Line down the left field line, and that's trouble into the corner. A little insurance couldn't hurt, and Fast Eddie pedal, pedals into second with a double. I like the way Eddie Perez rounded first base. He, he tried to become very aerodynamic. He, he leaned into the bag, had his head down, and boy, he was churning. He got a little bit of a bad break. This should have been an easy double, but it caromed off the wall sharply back to Dave Clark. Watch right here. He keeps his head down, and he's cutting that one as he rounds first base and made it easy gliding into second. You and I define gliding somewhat differently. Here's, <laughs> here's Mark Lemke. Renner at second, nobody out. Maddox on deck. Line, tough break there. Safe pick. Lumpy's 0 for 3. Hit that one right on the nose. And Greg Maddox will hit. And Jim Riggleman's on his way to the mound. 
Maddox loves this. If they make a pitching change with him about to hit, and they are. Yeah, That's he'll be talking about this for a while. Well, we're going to have to listen to that this whole road trip. Here comes Terry Adams out of the bullpen. And as Jim Riggleman makes a change, he also makes the, I don't know how he knows to do this, but he makes the belt south call to the bullpen. managed in Little Rock in the Texas League for the Cardinals. Beer was not allowed to be sold in Little Rock, Arkansas on Sunday, so they had doubleheaders on Saturday instead and had Sunday off. He walked him. The crowd is not enchanted with that particular piece of pitching, and here comes Jeff Blouser. Blouser, two out of four, two runs scored. He's hit the ball hard every time up there. Maddox has a bad break here. He's got Perez on in front of him. Otherwise, he could doubtless steal a base. Oh, I think he'd already be gone. And we just hope he doesn't try to steal it anyway. The pitch to Blouser. There's a strike on the corner, 0 and 1. All the other action, as Joe told you, under the arcs tonight. The outfield plays Blouser just slightly toward left field. Grace very wide of the bag at first. Going away, a ball and a strike. If I were Mark Grace, he's due up third in the ninth. I'd try to saunter over to Maddox and find out what he's got in mind in the bottom of the inning. The problem is he already knows. Mm -hmm. We were talking on radio. You talk about a mutual admiration society. Talk to Maddox about Grace or Grace about Maddox. A ball and two strikes. Ask him right there about a fastball. Maybe he was asking for one. The one two, Michael Tucker on deck. Two balls, two strikes. Very quiet crowd here at Wrigley. The 2 2 strike recalled inside corner. Blonzer knew it. Adams made a good pitch on it. First strikeout. First out recorded by Adams. And if the Braves are going to do any further damage, their offensive hero on the day, Michael Tucker, will have to do it. Jeff Blouse has been such a tough out of late. You've really got to make some good pitches and you've got to put him in a good spot. That one was at the knees inside and Jeff just had to tip his cap to him. He was looking away and didn't get it out there. Nomo made a similar pitch to him yesterday to strike him out. So if the Braves are to score further, it's up to this guy. Michael Tucker takes a strike outside corner 0 and 1. They play him straight away in the outfield. Perez at second, Maddox at first, two out. Line drive, but on one hop to Sandberg, and the inning is over, so we go to the bottom of the ninth. Maddox seeks his 14th victory of the year. One hit, no runs, no errors, two left. Bottom of the ninth, 4-1 Atlanta. Maddox has thrown 70 pitches, 56 strikes. Sean Dunstan is on deck. He ranked. Nobody on, nobody out. Cubs have left only two runners on base. Ah, pop fly. That should be easy. Klesko calls for it. Maybe not be easy, but did he make it? Yes, why not? There's the first one in the ninth. Good play by Ryan. 
Yeah, I don't think Greg's had his best stuff here the last couple of innings as evidenced by the pop ups and the outs that ball was in on his hands though. But you know he can smell the wind here in the ninth inning. And as few pitches as he has thrown he can't be all that tired. It's a very nice day. Cool pleasant. Three rank. Dunstan mm. took it. Pitch number 73. If we have a short break, can we just keep playing the second game? Let him keep going until he gets tired. I don't see any reason why not. I pop. That should be easy. Who wants it? Mark Lemke. Battles the wind a little bit. Two out. Boy, and this really rubs salt in the wound for the Cubs because they let him go. 74 pitches. 14 balls. 60 strikes. I don't know that I've ever seen anything quite like this. Mark Wallers is in the bullpen, but his heart's not in it. No, it's what, not. What am I doing? <laughs> Here's Mark Grace. There, missed with one. One ball, no strike. You'd think a major league pitcher could throw the ball over the plate every now and then. Let's go. Ninth inning. Line foul. One and one. That's 76 pitches. Sammy Sosa would be next. Grace is 0 for 3. He hits that ball hard. Tucker on the run. Still going, still going. That ball is up against the wall. Grace to second, and he will make it. Sliding head first, the two-out double. Well, now one more base runner brings a tying run to the plate. Sosa the batter. Well, did he get the fastball he wanted? He was lobbying at first base with Maddox running. Let's see, they moved the target inside. And he didn't get it there. And it was a fastball left up. Here's Sosa. He has driven in a run with an infield out. He's 0 for 3. Dave Hansen has grabbed a bat and moved on deck. That should do it. Ground ball to Lemke. He's got it. Greg Maddox has won his 14th game of the year. He did it. With 78 pitches and only 15 of them missed the strike zone. One hit, no runs, no errors, one left. And folks, you just saw a great pitching performance. And needless to say, Greg Maddox with that performance is our AutoZone player of the game. It's his fifth complete game of the year. He moves into second place, tied for second place in the National League and complete games behind Pedro Martinez. Here's a look at some of his work this afternoon. Struck out Mark Grace in the first inning. In fact, he racked up six strikeouts in all today. Glanville, Dave Clark twice today. Tyler Houston on a changeup. Good breaking ball to Scott Service that struck him out. And overall, brilliant performance. I don't know what else we can say about the guy other than the fact that he is now 14 and 3. He is tops in the National League in the win column. The Braves win game one. Back to give you the totals right after this. <laughs> 